Israel used a half-ton supersonic Rampage missile to strike Iran. Israel's recent strike on Iran used a long-range supersonic missile and appears to have been a Rampage air-to-surface missile, the Times of Israel reports. U.S. officials said Israel launched a missile attack on a military base near the city of Isfahan last Friday. Israel did not confirm the reports while Iran said there was minor damage. Although it is not yet known exactly what weapon was used in the strike, the Times of Israel writes that based on photographs and damage from the strike, it can be said that it was a Rampage missile. The Rampage missile was developed by Israel Aerospace Industries for use against targets such as communications and command centers, air force bases, maintenance centers and critical infrastructure. According to the company's website, the missile weighs 567 kilograms and is a precision long-range non-homing air-to-ground strike weapon. The 4.7-meter rocket can also travel at supersonic speed, making it difficult to detect and intercept using air defense systems such as the Iron Dome. Recall that Iranian-Israeli relations greatly deteriorated after Israel struck the Iranian consulate in Syria on April the 1st. In response, Iran attacked Israel with more than 300 missiles and drones on the night of April the 14th. And on April the 19th, information appeared that Israel responded by striking a military facility in the Iranian city of Isfahan. Military analyst Amir Bukbat, speaking on Israeli news platform Walla, described the exchange of blows as follows. Iran attacked Israel's rear with more than 500 weapons, including ballistic missiles, cruise missiles and drones, with 99% of them intercepted and a few that landed inside Israel, causing no real damage. The attacking side on April the 20th achieved a higher effect and damage with a tenth of the weapons used by the Iranians and presented the Islamic Revolutionary Guards helpless in defense and without any response. The attacker on April the 20th destroyed the radar of the S-300 system. The Iranians are now well aware that if needed, Israel is responsible for the wave of attacks at night in the Middle East, then next time it may also attack nuclear facilities that are closer to the targets of the attacks. Iran threatened Israel with new strikes. It is dangerous to play with its lion's tail. Following Israel's airstrike on Iran, Iranian parliamentarian Mahmoud Abbasadeh Meshkini is warning the country for having made a very dangerous and strategic mistake by playing with the lion's tail. In remarks to the semi-official ILNA news outlet, Meshkini, a member of the National Security and Foreign Policy Commission, emphasized that Iran is equipped with the most advanced military equipment and precision missiles. On April the 19th, explosions were reported near the airport and an army base in Isfahan province located in the central part of the country. The attack prompted Iran's air defense systems to be activated at several sites, according to state media. While U.S. officials have confirmed the attack, Israel has not yet acknowledged any involvement in the airstrike. Iranian state media, controlled by the regime, is downplaying the strike. An official stated that the country's air defenses intercepted three drones and denied any impacts from missiles. Iranian media also reported that their nuclear sites remained secure and showed calm scenes in areas where explosions were reportedly heard. Hezbollah will retaliate if Israel keeps attacking southern Lebanon. Naim Qasem, Deputy Secretary General of the Lebanese Shiite Organization, told NBC News. We will not wage a full-scale war unless the Israelis decide to get into war against us, he said. He pointed out, however, that Hezbollah would not accept that the Israelis transgress the rules of engagement that are currently set in the south of Lebanon. If Israel attacks us and aggresses us, then we will definitely respond. If they escalate, we will escalate he emphasized. Referring to the Palestinian-Israeli escalation, Qasem placed equal responsibility for civilian casualties on both Israel and the US. I consider that US President Joe Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu are both complicit in one scheme with their minor differences, the Hezbollah official said.
China preparing to physically destroy U.S. critical infrastructure, FBI director warns. Hackers linked to the Chinese government have infiltrated critical U.S. infrastructure and are waiting for the right moment to strike. This was stated by FBI director Christopher Wray, quoted by Reuters. According to him, a Chinese hacking group known as Vault Typhoon has successfully gained access to the computer networks of numerous U.S. companies in the telecommunications, energy, water and other critical sectors. According to the FBI director, China is developing the ability to physically destroy our critical infrastructure at a time of its choosing. His plan is to launch sneak attacks on civilian infrastructure to try to create panic, says Christopher Ray. In his interview, the hacker group's intentions are consistent with China's broader intention to keep the United States from defending Taiwan. As Reuters notes, earlier this week, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesman said that the Vault Typhoon hacker group is not affiliated with the Chinese government and is part of a criminal group specializing in ransomware. Recall in recent years, relations between the United States and China have sharply deteriorated, which was also facilitated by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. However, the main tension between the two states stems from the struggle for influence in Southeast Asia and the Western Pacific. So in March, the countries exchanged veiled threats of war. Last week, China also imposed sanctions against a number of American military industrial corporations. The truth is, the Chinese cyber actors have taken advantage of very basic flaws in our technology. We have made it easy on them. Jen Easterly, who leads the US Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, told earlier, Unfortunately, the technology underpinning our critical infrastructure is inherently insecure because of decades of software developers not being held liable for defective technology. That has led to incentives where features and speed to market have been prioritized against security, leading our nation vulnerable to cyber invasion. That has to stop. Easterly said, the FBI and Justice Department have previously stressed their focus on preventing malign campaigns by the Chinese government and hackers.